Hello world, my name is Robinson Recalde and here we are seeing another video of introduction to HTML course. So welcome again and I hope you enjoy this video which is the first practical video we're going to see in this course. I mean practical, sorry when I say practical I mean that you need to do all the things that I'm doing here and you need to try to understand why am I doing it, right? Okay, in this video we're going to do our first HTML document, our first HTML document all complete, okay? So we're going to check for the structure of the document if it's correct, we are going to see all the content we need to put on an HTML document and of course we are going to make all the basic structure. After that, I will explain how to make it more complex with some CSS, jQuery, or JavaScript. So, when we are going to start the HTML document, you need to remember that we need to put these curly brackets to start the HTML document with something like doc type HTML. This is to say to the browser, hey, I'm going to write some HTML document around here, okay? So, now we're going to put HTML because we're going to use the version of HTML 5.0, right? So, we can make mm, some adjustions to, adjustment, sorry, to the HTML document, to the code. Normally, we will put something like HTML and HTML. That's it. But we're going to put something here really curious called language. Which is this language. And we're going to put the language we are using now, which is English. Right? Okay. Now we are going to save this document as, I don't know, in the desktop. Uh, first try. That HTML. And I will look here what what it says save as type all files. I will look for HTML, put that HTML again, and we'll save. And you will see how Sublime Text we're, is, is going to change all the colors you're using on your screen, right? This is really, really simple. So, why are we going to use, so why are, are we using Sublime Text? The thing, the good thing about Sublime Test is that they put some colors when you make a mistake and they put some colors when you are making the language so you can make it all right, make it all, I don't know, some visible thing, some good looking things so you as a writer, as a web programmer, you can see all the things you're doing by now. So if I make this, for example, and I forget to put the uh, the, the ending curly bracket. This will happen. All the text where is going to put green. Green it means you are putting an attribute to the HTML tag. The first HTML tag we are using is the type. The second is the HTML tab itself to make the proper way to, to say to the browser, hey, we're going to write some code in HTML 5.0, right? So if I write here, it will be all green because the browser, the, the Sublime Text screen, the Sublime Text software, believes you are going to write some attribute, so some extra attribute to the HTML tab you are now opening. I need to close this and I need to start here with the beginning of the document. So I have some test document that, that I've, I've been working on which is this over here. You can see how all the HTML is developed. Oh, this is a, a, a principal screen, a home screen for a web page that I'm by now working. So here you can see that the first, that the sec, sorry, the third tag we're going to use is the hex tag. Remember all the time to close the tags after you follow with 
the tags you are going to use with the structure of, of, the, of your document with the personalization of the document you are now developing. Okay, so we have here the meta, the meta tag, which is to put a lot of information about your web page. For example, the chart set, if the chart set you're going to use, the, the Unicode you're going to use on your web page. The Unicode, I mean the keyboard structure, the language you're going to put, the keyboard you're going to develop. Uh, he, here in Venezuela, which is where I live, because we are we speak Spanish, we need the accents, and we need uh, the the ñ, for example, which is this one, to make some nouns, to put some words on a language. So we use the chart set. Sorry, utf, utf, sorry, utf minus eight, and uh, we close, right? You can see it over here. You have some shortcut icon, which is this one, that you put it to make the icon of your web page. Let me show you what icon. This icon is called Favicon, and it's the icon that appears over here. You can see at the Firefox screen. Let me go to Google, and you can see it on Google too. This is the Favicon icon and you can put it on your folder on your server to put it on your web page so let's wait this this is the icon you can see it's here at google this g is the icon of google it's the favicon so to put it we're going to put sorry to put over here rel which is reference which reference a shortcut icon to say to the browser and to the tag what is the thing we're going to put here and then we need to put the href which is the reference which is where the image is located we can put all the direction of course but if we are going to work on a server, we hardly have to make that because the, the browser normally, um, by instinct, believes that all of your documents, and of course this is the way, are in your local folder. So you can skip the part where you put the local folder and just put the folder where you have inside your local folder, before where you have the images and put something like favicon png if this is the name of your image. Remember that this is the name of your image and this is the folder where the image is located, right? Okay, so we just close this tag and continue. The title. The title of the web page is the thing that is going to appear around here where it says Google. So if I put here, first try, the title of my web page, of my HTML document, is going to be first try. You will see it here. Let me save. Okay. <coughs> now we continue. The link. I prefer to explain it over here because it's much easier. You have here the link. This link is to refer to some style sheet outside your document. Remember that you can put instead of link something like style and close the style and here you will put everything you want to put like it was a CSS document, right? But this is really I don't know, awkward and an enormous work. So, um, also it can be somewhat disorganized. So you need to be as organized as you can be. So with the link tag, you can achieve this. Realm, which is the type of document you are putting here, a style sheet. 
and again the H R E F and you know if you have a folder called CSS or a folder called styles you can put styles and then CSS I don't know main that CSS you can put all the style sheet you want here but remember if you have some code at one style sheet and the same code in another style sheet but different values the first code that is, is the first that is going to be here is the one that is going to take the lead so to speak for example if you have I don't know another another style sheet over here and it's called I don't know styles the folder and second main that CSS that is an awkward name and if the second main CSS you have I don't know zone code for a class a class called hello and in the main CSS you have another class called hello as well and the value is color red and the first in the main CSS but in the second main CSS the value is blue color equal blue and the real color that you want is blue but you forgot that you have the red value at the main CSS <coughs> you will see the red instead of the blue because in this order the one that is taking the lead is the main dot CSS now it's really easy to understand but if you have any question remember that you can put all of the things at the comment sections <coughs> so this script is really important the script is like the magic code that you can use of jQuery or JavaScript to put I don't know some libraries of code on your code to make some awesome things like the carousel like to make the text bold when you put the cursor on it and a lot a lot of things so you can save a lot of works instead of putting something like I don't know a script here and text JavaScript you, you you see that the sublime text put it automatically the type equal to text slash JavaScript and you here is going to put all the code for example if I put here def no for, forget this if I put here all the JavaScript code, it will take it as something normal. But you can also put something like something like a script as RC and here put the link, the URL to the to where the JavaScript is located. So you can save a lot of works and a lot of lines of code. So this is everything for the head. The head is truly important. I think you can put more things here like for example meta keywords meta keywords and you put here the keywords of your HTML page with of your website. Keywords something like hello Edipedia education free education and etc 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 a lot of stuff so uh, when someone is looking for these keywords at Google they will go straight to your web page if you have a strong SEO on your web page of course so this is everything for the head now we're going to be at the body section the body section is one of the most important things because remember in the head section everything is invisible to the viewer this information is for search engines and for the developers of the web page but the body tag and all the items that will be inside of the body tag is for the viewer to see it's not invisible anymore and the viewers is going to see this content this content is the most important of the web page because it will be, uh, I don't know, something like your image on your web. The body is divided in some elements like the header, the menu, 
<coughs> the content and all the columns you are going to use if you're going to develop your web page with CSS columns, of course. So, this part of the video is something like I want you to create. Remember that in an HTML web page, you will have something like your menu, which is this on Google. The I don't know how to say this. The logo. That was the word I was looking for. The logo of Google is like your content. All of the content of your web page. But remember that this is only the the main screen. And it depends on the web page you are developing. This is not going to have a lot of content, for example. But inside a lot of pages you will have a lot of content for example if I look here for hello let, let me look here for hello uh, I am on Google or oh, Venezuela Google so I will look here for hello and then just wait for the page to 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 load let's wait some few seconds okay we have we have here the results and we have here some I don't know clearer clearer view of the definition of the concept concepts are using now as a HTML developer. You can see here the logo of the web page and this area over here is like your menu, right? This area over here is like the menu but you have of course a menu over here. This is like your header, the header and the menu. This is the menu, this is the header, this is the, the, search, the search bar and you have here all the content. So if you're going to develop this as I don't know as some column some columns theme you need to think this really straight because it could be somewhat difficult let's go to the I don't know let me see um, any page I don't have some quite preference for the page we're going to use to explain these concepts so you have here like a really really simple HTML document that I want you to do because you need to practice a lot of this to achieve it to really make it so you have here this one over here is your principal menu your main menu you have a second menu which is this one and a third menu which is this one but the menu that is going to follow you all on the web page is your main menu um, you have here for example the logo the hello magazine logo and you have here all the content remember that css put all the web page like boxes so everything is in a box so here you have like a really huge box the the right the red highlighted thing is a really huge box with tiny boxes inside the huge box for Hong, it's a box. For celebrities, it's a box. For royalty, it's a box. For fashion, it's a box. For brides, for babies, for healthy and beauty, for food, for travel, for TV and film. All of these things are boxes. And here you have another box. This is a huge box. And this is like one, two, three, four tiny boxes. So if you look everything as a box, you can see that it's really, really simple to manage all the web page because you, because you can put one box inside another box and inside another box to put all the content you need to put. And you can see how to, how putting the colors is simpler and easier and really, really of good taste. You can see here, for example, you have a box here, but you have another box here, another box here, and another box here. The CSS box model is something really important that I will be explaining in later videos along the, the course. But for now, I only want you to make a simple, a simple web page to put, I don't know, an invitation. The exercise is this. Imagine you have to make an invitation to a wedding. So please use all the knowledge we ha you have acquired in this course 
to make that wedding presentation, to make the wedding invitation for your families and your friends. So I will wait for the results on the comment sections. Hope to see you soon in later videos.